Well, I was thinking, thinking about China and, and what, a, what a hit Mrs. Reagan seemed to have made with the, with the Chinese leaders. And um, I, was, I was wondering, have you, what do you think, how do you think she might go over with the Russians? <laughs> uh, they're harder to figure. <laughs> I'm sure she could be good in your strategy. If you <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you, um, but when you go abroad and uh, on these diplomatic missions, in what ways is she helpful to you? Oh my, I, I think well, well, just being herself and just as you say, the uh, uh, the reaction to her. Uh, I remember in South Korea, and uh, the president and I and. His wife, and she was a little gal like uh, Nancy is. And uh, after a couple of days, and we were uh, the four of us had met in the in their residence, and now we're on our way to the state dinner. And uh, Nancy and his wife were walking ahead of us, and he and I were about 20 feet behind. And I nudged him, and I said, "Look," and like two schoolgirls, there they were holding hands and walking down the hall and just chatting <laughs> with each other. But I tell you, back when I was governor and Richard Nixon uh, asked us to do a mission for him to Asia to represent him, and he made the suggestion that uh, it would be better if I not go alone. Really? Family, yes. Really? And um, it, there's something about it then there were three more times then that he did. I, I made four trips, uh, three of them to Asia and one to uh, uh, several countries in Europe for him. For him. Mm -hmm. And always the same way. And I don't know, there is, I think it, it gives a, an atmosphere that gets down to uh, being congenial and, mm -hmm. uh, and friendly quicker than if you just go as a head of state or representing a head of state. and, mm -hmm. and uh, to meet in a business-like way. Um, what, what, when you're after the day's meetings, do you talk to her about what you and the leaders discussed? Oh, sure. And does she? Yeah. Yes, I just assume that she's cleared for top secret. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> does um, does Mrs. Reagan ever critique anything that you say or scold you? Like, for example. The, um, what was her re reaction to your joke about uh, outlawing and bombing the Russians? Well, uh, being a wife, she cautions me all the time that I, I can't ever uh, rely on the fact that the mic might not be open or might be open and so forth. And uh, so I uh, did again because uh, obviously I was saying what I said just off the top of my head for the benefit of a few people like this that were in the room and with no idea that the networks were eavesdropping <laughs> or had a line open. Of course, on that, I sometimes, and I've told her, I wonder, uh, granted that, uh, okay, being in the position I am in, even just for the few there, I shouldn't have said it. But I didn't say it for any circulation beyond that room, nor would it have been circulated. But I just wonder, isn't there a certain responsibility in the part of a free press free because it's in a free nation, to also use some control on their part because it doesn't become an international incident until they spread it all over the world. Well, did you and she talk about it afterwards? Uh, yes, and of course I wished I hadn't said it, but... Uh, but did she scold you? No, no, no. she didn't <laughs> scold. <laughs> but she... She, I told you, so is me. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. um, do you think uh, that she's changed since you've become president? No. Is she the same person that she was? Yes. Before? Yes. Um, um, do you think maybe that public reaction to her has changed in the four years you've been president? Yes, I do, because I think she started off with um, getting a pretty bum rap. You do. I think there was some kind of preconceived uh, uh, image that, uh, as a result of some image making that went on, mm -hmm. and uh, 
and it wasn't fair. Oh, well, when you say changed, I think there is, is some change. Uh, uh, she's better able to take some of the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. I remember when I was governor, and um, there would be some attacks on me. Uh, I would know that she'd heard them or read them when I came home because I could smell the bath oil clear down at the front door. She'd, she'd take a bath and uh, then all by herself in there she would, she would respond <laughs> to, to, to these charges and just oh, really? uh, have a good time doing that and getting it off her chest. Now she doesn't have to take that bath. <laughs> she's, she's used to it. She's used to it. Well, I was going to ask you, does, uh, when, when criticism becomes too severe, um, does Mrs. Reagan come to you for comfort, or does she just keep that to herself? Or in the bathroom, in, in the bath with the oil? <laughs> no, we, uh, we're, we're not very much for keeping things from each other. But as I say, she's better able to take it now. She knows it goes with the territory. Uh -huh. Uh, how how did she how did she learn that? Did you have to uh, sort of help her through a lot of tough spots? And oh no, I think as you know, as the time went on, and, uh, or eight years there in mm -hmm. in uh, Sacramento of that, and gradually, uh, as I say, she learned that uh, and saw it happening to other people too, and realized, well, that's just part of the game. What about here in the White House? What what would you say was a tough time aside from the obviously tough time when you're when your assassination? Well, um, I mean, as far as uh, was she particularly sensitive to the uh, criticism of her redecorating and? Uh, uh, this was this was upsetting to her, and and she had a right to be because. Uh, vastly distorted and an image was mm -hmm. uh, painted of her that was absolutely false to uh, what she actually is like. And uh, well, for example, the dishes. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't go out and buy a set of dishes for the White House. Uh, two donors who wanted to remain anonymous uh, simply uh, ordered them through a a very fine maker of, of China. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was wonderful and it was most helpful to her when uh, uh, someone like Margaret Truman uh, uh, communicated with her oh, really? and told her how much she understood because uh, uh, I don't think there had been, I may be wrong on this, so don't hold me to it, but I don't think there had been new China since Truman's day. Well, I, and, uh, I knew at one point what the uh, facts were there, and I can look them up, yeah. but I don't know. Right. Okay. Um, people who've been married for 30 years and more, such as yourselves, can't help but have an effect on one another. Have, has she changed you in any way, or have you changed her? I don't know whether I'd be able to, to tell or not. Um, we've gotten along very well over all the 30 odd years and uh, what about politically would has she had a have you had an effect on her politically or well her yes and this is contrary to again part of that image making really that false image that somehow she was uh, a power behind the throne uh, uh, directing me or something and and stories that appeared that um, uh, my change in my political views from Democrat to Republican had been as the result of her. Uh, she would be the first to tell you that, uh, and she's not very proud of the fact that she just was apolitical. She just had no interest in it and never given politics a thought. And uh, so uh, if there was an effect, it was, yes, it would have been uh, <laughs> my getting her interested really? uh, in this. But the change was all mine, and uh, yes, there, that has taken place, that she uh, now is aware and is conscious and to the point of believing that more people should take a greater interest mm -hmm. in public affairs. Well, would you say she has good political instincts? Yes. Yeah. Do you rely on her in a, in, I, I read about the 1980 campaign and I have certainly the impression that 
that she was a, fact, a strong um, strategist in that campaign in a certain way. Is that true? No, there was a time when we had to make some changes and uh, we both were aware of it. <laughs> um, things have been getting rather unhappy now between us, but uh, uh -huh. uh, in, the, in the campaign, no, we, uh, as I say, it's just, I don't know, it, for as far back as I can remember in the marriage, I've, uh, anything that happens or things that are happening that are interesting, uh, uh, the first thought in my mind is, my first image in my mind is uh, uh, my, that I'm going to tell, tell her about it. And, uh, mm -hmm. You know, she doesn't have to say, how are things at the office today? She doesn't. <laughs> no. Well, I was going to ask you, who's more or less conservative? Uh, or, uh, is she more conservative than you or less conservative? Or how do you, how do you oh, no, define think, your oh, political philosophy? No, I think we're in complete agreement on that. Really? But as I said, the, um, uh, when we were married, uh, politics was the farthest thing from her mind. Now, it was, was always... She a, was she a Democrat then in the beginning? Too? No, no, no. Well, I assume because her parents were Republican, I assume that she was Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, there was never... It had been coming on me for quite some time. I, for a great many years, you know, as I've always said, if, if in Hollywood you don't sing or dance, you become an after-dinner speaker. And so I'd been out of the mashed potato circuit for years, and uh, I literally converted myself. The things that I always did my own speeches, and I talked of public things and things that I uh, uh, thought were wrong, mm -hmm. and it just finally dawned on me that uh, what I was saying, I, was, I could no longer follow the line of the leadership of the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Now, when I started as a Democrat, my first vote in 1932 for Mr. Roosevelt, uh, I could still go by, swear by that, because the Democratic platform that year uh, pledged a 25% cut in the cost of government, elimination of needless bureaus and commissions and agencies, and a return to states and local communities of the authority that they claimed had been unjustly seized by the federal government. Now, I think that platform, there's only one party would fit that platform today. That's the Republican Party. Well, um, would you say that Mrs. Reagan it was a, uh, came into this uh, role of a, a political wife in, somewhat reluctantly? Well, we both did. Uh -huh. uh, not so much back in those days when, believe me, there was never a thought in my mind that I would ever be in public life. Uh -huh. I, I always think you, you have to pay your way and uh, the people in show business have always been most generous about their talent and singing and dancing for worthy causes and all. Well, being a speaker, I usually wind up emceeing at fundraisers and mm -hmm. so forth, campaigning for people I believed in and worked for, and at that time was doing it for, for Democrats. And it wasn't until uh, the speech I made in the 1964 campaign for Barry Goldwater, the national speech, that the following year, a delegation called on me to ask me to run for governor. And we both of us just dismissed it out of hand. Said, no, you go find a candidate and I'll go campaign for him and, and help. But uh, no, this is our life and the other. Well, they kept on insisted the party, the Republican Party, which I was a new member of, was so terribly split after the bitterness of that campaign, that they kept coming back and coming back and saying that I could bring the party together and so forth. And finally they headed to the place that uh, she and I couldn't sleep. And we finally said, what if, what if they're right? And what if we, um, uh, we don't help and uh, the worst happens? Uh, uh, could we ever live with ourselves? Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, we both came to an agreement that uh, that I would uh, I'd make a deal. That I would, if they made it possible for me to uh, go on a speaking tour for 
next several months around the state. Mm -hmm. And not just political speaking, just the regular kind that I've been doing and everything. That I'd come back and tell them whether they were right or wrong about that I was the only one that offered a chance of mm -hmm. this victory and all. And, um, and I actually started out with the idea that I'd come back and be able to say no. I realized about a month before the time was up that no, I was going to have to say yes. Yeah. So it, it was reluctant. Uh -huh. uh, we but once she made that decision with you, why she went into it and with yes. her full... Yeah. Uh, she, she does things also, though, uh, that she doesn't do for political reasons, but things that just come naturally to her by the way she was raised and by her very wonderful mother. Mm -hmm. um, things like in California, uh, she became aware of the program called the Foster Grandparents mm -hmm. Program. And it wasn't doing well. It was uh, kind of, and it wasn't getting too much governmental attention. And this just looked to her like uh, a wonderful thing, particularly for those elder citizens mm -hmm. who don't feel needed that they could be, feel needed again, as well as for the children themselves. And uh, she really became the spark plug that made it catch on. I'm, I've read that. And I remember we went to Australia on a trip. And uh, I always like to do Q&A whenever I can. So after my speech, I did open it up to Q&A. And in this Australian gathering, big luncheon, uh, someone asked her a question. And she told him her answer was telling him about the foster grandparents program. And a few weeks after we were home, she got a letter from Australia that told her they now had a foster oh, really? grandparents program. Is that right? Yeah. They, they t t followed her lead. Um, what's her role going to be in the campaign? Well, I guess like it was the last time. She, uh, yeah. her role is traveling with me. <laughs> <laughs> She's, is she? uh, there are sometimes some things that they've, uh, uh, that, that she has done. She prefers to do Q&A than to make a speech. But uh, no, we campaign together, and, and I think that's, that's right also. I think the people have got a right to see you together. Uh -huh. um, she, um, she's lost some weight since she's been here. Yes. Dropped down a couple of dress sizes. Now, I don't think it's because of the White House food, and no. I bet it isn't because you're hard to live with. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's because it's a tense job being first lady? No, I think there was a great traumatic shock uh, in mm -hmm. the end of March in 1981 uh -huh. Uh -huh. that I got well quicker than she did. And, uh, and then when it was followed by, you know, times when I'd go out on one of these one or two day trips and so forth, and, and uh, I knew that she was tied up tight until I got back. Mm -hmm. uh, Is she still? That was part of it, and then she had a tragedy in her own family, and then that too was yeah. very traumatic. Yeah. Is she still uptight whenever you're apart? I think that's eased somewhat. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, you, the, the Nancy Reagan you see, the wife and the mother and the friend and the pal, is is a lot different than the wife or than the, the Nancy Reagan the public sees. How do you describe um, that difference? What what? How do you? Well, as I say, there was a lot of false image making that went on. Those people who then get to know her, know what she's like, find a very warm person. You only have to look at those photographs, like the trip and the trip that you were on in China, and see her when uh, she enters a place where there are children, and uh, it's like the Pied Piper. She doesn't have to open her mouth, and they come at her with open arms. These, it's, it's wonderful to see. They just swarm over her, showing the children maybe are wiser than uh, <laughs> older people are with regard to uh, reading character. But, um, but there's you know, a she's a... She is a, has a great sense of family loyalty, uh, believes very much in that, 
and it's just that um, it's hard uh, to uh, to let uh, one's inner a uh, more private person come forth in this fishbowl environment that you live yes. in, I'm sure. And there must be times when, when the thing that you value the most is just being in private together. But the White House obviously, or the presidency, always intrudes. What does she say when you bring the work home? Oh, <laughs> understands. And if there's someone there, like uh, some of our family or anything, visiting or anything, and after dinner, and it gets along toward 9 o'clock or so, and we're sitting around and talking, uh, she'll make the excuse for me, and she'll say, you've got some work to do that you brought home. And uh, I'll say, yes, I have. And say, He's got some work. <laughs> I get to go do the work without looking like I'm being rude. But, uh, she makes the uh, excuses for you. Yes. Um, do, do you ever discuss uh, the work that you that you bring home? Oh, sure, yes. As I say, I, uh, there aren't any secrets between us. Maybe sometimes I bore her telling her <laughs> about it. But um, do, do you solicit her opinion on on positions you're taking and uh, appointments or issues or? Not in the sense of outright asking, you know, what should I do? I not that, but. Uh, talking about them, telling what my concerns are and so forth, and uh, she pitches in and... Uh, she to, becomes a sounding board? Well, and then sense. as to what, uh, what it sounds like to her and so forth, and ask questions, well, what about uh, this or that, and, uh, and it's all very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, is that... Um, in, on television the other day in Santa Barbara, she sort of filled in for you, and she sort of knew the answer. Uh, uh, is it because of these? That was, that was magnified out of all proportion. The simple truth of the matter is, and she would tell you herself, she was talking to herself. <laughs> they kept on, and I was, this pause that I made was only because, as you know, I don't like to take questions at a photo opportunity. And uh, we were... The three of us were standing there, and I, uh, they asked, and, and it, my mind was, am I, should I just say, no, I'm not going to answer? Or, and I, at the same time, I didn't want to seem surly, as if I was putting them down. And, and it was the question that was all the time of, what are you going to do about the Russians? Sometimes I wish somebody would ask me what I think the Russians ought to do about me. <laughs> <laughs> and they never do. But um, uh, she actually ducked her head like this and just... And she didn't even know I could hear. I guess I had the button turned up. Uh, <laughs> she was on that side of me. And she just uh, said this, and I thought, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I said, that's uh, doing what we can do. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, you would have preferred, what you're saying is you would have preferred not to answer at that point? Well, as I say, I hate to break the rule, which I do every yeah. once in a while, because sometimes I console myself that when I break the rule, at a photo op and answer, it's because the particular question is one that if I don't answer, I have given a story as if, as well as if I did answer, and maybe a story I wouldn't like. Mm -hmm. Like I could see it, the president refused to answer <laughs> this question. And uh, so mm -hmm. sometimes I think it's better to uh, give it and say it, but right then I was, I was thinking to myself, am I going to answer this? Or, and I heard her, and she had her head down, and she just muttered this thing to herself. And I said, that's... <laughs> and then I repeated it. What kind of a mother uh, is she? Um, was she the one who was the disciplinarian, or was she a soft touch, or what were the dynamics? She of? was more of the disciplinarian because uh, mainly um, it, was a, it was actually a time factor. When I was doing the General Electric Theater, mm -hmm. we were first married, and children were young, and I did that for eight years. The, there were about three months out of each year, uh, not all in one chunk, but in, yeah. in which the, they had me on the road speaking. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she was left at home and in charge. And then, of course, came jobs like governor and this and all. Um, no, she was uh, uh, she was the disciplinarian, much more than I was. I'm 
I'm the soft touch in the, the family. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she knows it, and I think the kids knew it, too. Really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they could get their way and... I could sometimes come to the foot-stomping stage and move in. Did you ever spank? Huh? Did you ever spank? I'm trying to remember <laughs> whether we ever did or not. I, I don't think so. Um, do you... Um, do you and she ever disagree about um, maybe issues or like um, abortion or uh, no. gender gap or ERA or? No. Uh, pretty much in, a, uh -huh. uh, in agreement on, on did she ever? Things. Did she have any influence on you when in the appointment of uh, Sandra Day O'Connor? No. She knew that uh, I'd made up my mind long. Uh, after I was elected and before I actually took office, that uh, when there was a vacancy, uh, mm -hmm. I felt that the time had come that there should be a woman on the, on the Supreme Court. But you see, again, I'd had eight years of judicial appointing mm -hmm. and uh, was pretty well set in my ways as to the things that I would look for and that I... Uh, mm -hmm. I think that in California for eight years, I made it a point that I was going to take judicial appointments out of politics. At the state level, they had been very political in the past. Uh, they were used as rewards for political activity and so forth. And I did take it out. We set up a system whereby there was a committee of citizens in each judicial district. There was a committee of fellow lawyers and judiciary, and then there was the state bar board. And each one of these, separate from the others, we submitted the names to them and looked at their ratings when they came back. And they had a regular form for rating that ranged all the way from NQ, not qualified, to mm -hmm. EWQ, ex, uh, extra well qualified. And I abided by those. Now, in the larger districts, the leeway that I had would be that there would be more than one that would come back to me with that, and then I could use things such as uh, one in women appointees or minority appointees mm -hmm. or something of that kind. I could balance uh, without violating the, uh, the standard we set for ourselves, and I stuck to that. But um, no, oh, we talked about it and everything, mm -hmm. and who mm -hmm. all, and the, she was as enthused as I was. In your tribute to her Wednesday night, what are the points you're going to make? Uh, well, that's... Uh, I think that's all been pretty well uh, done. That's on film. Is it on uh, film? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, so... Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. to, uh, well, well, Can I just another, ask uh, one thing? <coughs> anti-drug, her anti-drug campaign. I mean, you must be very proud of her. Oh, yes. And she has made such a difference nationwide. You could literally say, when she started and became, well, she was interested in that before we even came here because as a mother herself and, mm -hmm. and uh, knowing what it was doing to so many, uh, the idea was that they're just here and there, there may have been parents that were aware and were doing, trying to do something, but as any widespread movement, there wasn't parent involvement. There was too much of parents just refusing to believe that it was true of mm -hmm. their children. And I think the one great thing, above all, that she has gotten is across this country now, is the involvement of parents. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it grew out of her also seeing these young people in these treatment centers, talking to them, and hearing what they had to say, and how many times they would speak while they were in that treatment about how they wished that their parents mm -hmm. had been aware and had moved in on them, and also the hunger they had then for their parents mm -hmm. to go back to have the family life that they had tried to destroy with their drugs. And uh, yes, I think the, uh, because I'll tell you, with all that we're doing in law enforcement, 
to intercept drugs with borders and coastlines like ours, there is no way that you are ever going to be able to, to a great extent, take the drugs away from the people. You have to keep trying. You have to keep making it difficult for the drug pusher. Mm -hmm. But we will succeed when we take the customers away from the drugs, not the other way around. When we get the young people particularly, get them mm -hmm. to stand up and say, no more, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll have won the battle. But you were interested in the outcome of the DeLorean trial. Yes. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to comment. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't think you would. I don't know it is. I enjoyed it. Well, I enjoyed it too. Should I? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.